There's a new street fighter on your windowsill. The weapon is peace. The word is chill. Hello there, gang, and welcome to another episode of Displaying Model Behavior, the Earth's mightiest action figure video podcast. So take off your pants, crack a beer, and let's talk toys. We are going to cover my 100 favorite action figures as of right this minute. And I think you're going to find some surprises here because I've been doing so many videos recently where I've been listing off my favorite Marvel Legends, my favorite this, that I've been kind of looking at the same figures over and over again. And that got me to thinking, you know what? There's a lot of figures that I'm just not appreciating, that are kind of getting lost at the back and lost in the shuffle and covered in dust. Lord knows they get covered in dust. Yeah, yeah, I read the comments. Sorry about that. Don't tell anyone I live like this. So guys, this is my top 100 favorite figures that I am really getting some more appreciation out of now because I've brought them closer to my attention. And before we get started, I just want to say, if you like this video and you want to see more, join the 6-1 Clicks by clicking the like, share, and subscribe buttons. And if you want to doubly help out the channel, you can go over to patreon.com forward slash displaying model behavior, throw a few shekels my way, helps keep the lights on and keep me in plastic. Guys, I'm sorry, I just have to cut in here quickly because I was about to post this video without saying anything, but my conscience got the better of me. There was an incident recently where someone signed up to my Patreon, just like all of these amazing people have done. And you see, what happened was, immediately after signing up to Patreon, they were walking down the street and then a whole bunch of people ran up to them and desperately asked them to make love right then and there. And it was really awkward. Now, any number of things could have accounted for this, but it turns out after careful research, that it was a direct result of signing up to my Patreon. It turns out that being a Patreon supporter actually makes you 83.6% more attractive to, well, everyone. So I felt like I couldn't just encourage you to sign up to that without letting you know about the dangers and ramifications of doing so. So by all means, please throw your money my way, but at least I'm telling you, be warned of what the consequences might be. So with that all being said and done, guys, let's look at the top 100 favorite action figures in my current collection. You want to start things off with a bang? Let's do it. Prince Goro. Oh yeah, I'm not messing around here. I say that some of these figures were getting lost in the shuffle. This dude was not one of them. How? You, you can't. You can't lose this guy in the shuffle. He's too massive, epic, and awesome. This... Seeing this right here is what won me over to Storm Collectibles. I would always see some of the Mortal Kombat figures and think, ah, oh, gosh, that does look cool. It does look really cool, but oh, I can't justify that. It's not worth it. I will admire it from afar. Like that pretty girl in school, you just don't have the guts to ask out. And then finally, I saw Goro and I was like, you know what? I'm going to shoot my shot. And it all worked out well because now I have an amazing Mortal Kombat collection. I don't have any of the original quilted ninjas, but you know what? That's fine because Storm, they love to re-release stuff and repaint stuff and redo stuff. So I'm sure I'll be able to get them in my collection eventually. But honestly, what do I, why do I need any more figures than this guy? Just look at him. Look at him. He's incredible. The articulation in all the arms, double jointed knees and elbows. Look at the snarling, sneering urgh, kind of face. Like, you know, this dude is about to rip someone's arms off. And I'm so glad that in the more modern animated Mortal Kombat film, we get to see that in all its gross glory detail. It's like, oh, that's what Mortal Kombat is all about. The actual film, not so great, but that's the thing with Mortal Kombat. It's been around for so long, which by proxy means that I am quite old at this point. But still, I don't mind because we've had so many different media and interpretations. But this is the best iteration of Goro I have ever seen in my life. Look at the back wash on there that picks up like the leopard spot type designs on there. The big yin yang symbol that just makes this character just completely popped out of the arcade and into the palm of my hand right here. Absolutely love this guy. And now we got ourselves Bishop. He's from the future. 
Bishop straight from the animated series and the Jim Lee comics of course but that's where my mind will always go is the X-Men animated series and Bishop who I always found so annoying because he has the same thing that most time travelers do where he's so smug about being a time traveler he's like I'm from the future, so I know what happens. So all of you people are stupid. It's like, oh yeah? Well, you're from the bad future, so clearly you ain't doing too good, are ya? And that was just me. I don't like know-it-alls. That's all I'm saying. Cable was the same. I'm Cable. I'm from the future. That was a pretty good Cable voice, if I do say so myself. But yeah, people coming from the future, telling the people of the present what's what. It's like, look, dude, unless you got like an environmental message, get out of my face. What's that? Sentinels? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get to it. Just be more polite. That's all I'm saying. But this figure looks great. He's, what he is, is like they've gone to the extra effort of taking a basic body, but it's a big chunky body, but then making it look so special and unique with the extra harness with the big gun there. I love his neckerchief as well. And the glorious Kentucky waterfall going down the back of his head there. Business on top, party at the back. That's how Bishop rolls in the future and they recreate it wonderfully on here. Such a good figure. Now, of course, we're going to get a lot of Marvel Legends on this list. And already I can imagine people are going to say, you know what, Dave, what's the point in this list? Most of them are just Marvel Legends. You should call this the best Marvel Legends list. Why don't you only ever do Marvel Legends? Well, it's a Marvel Legends channel. All right. At least it was when it started. Okay. Don't get all salty because there's a lot of Legends on this list. I own a lot of Legends. All right. All right. All right. With that in mind, I got a doozy for you. We, you're not expecting this. Grey Gargoyle. What a loser. But what a great action figure. Because he's different. He's mixing things up a little bit. I'll be the first to say, Marvel Legends. Oh my goodness. We, Boy, do we like our repaints, don't we? We love our Bucky Caps and our Pizza Spider-Men getting repainted and reused. This guy, it doesn't matter what the buck is. Because there's so much that makes him so quintessentially him. First of all... The material itself is this kind of, well, first of all, his cape. Look at the, the first of all, first of all, look at his cape. Look at like the semi-permeable, no, that's membranes. <laughs> Get out of biology class. But the semi-translucent cape. So like you can see your finger moving behind it like you're doing some shadow puppetry there. That's a nice little touch. And then it actually feels like his, his body is, is kind of made out of a slightly, it feels like a gummier kind of plastic, but maybe I'm just imagining that. But he just feels different and I love that and I love the way that they've engineered the cape sort of strapping around his shoulders which is so funny because it makes the character look like he's wearing some cheap Halloween costume and it's like ah oh, I know you are like a terrifying murderer but you're also kind of adorable really and speaking of which he's got his little pencil moustache which just seems so silly but again it's a perfect iteration of the character that's what he looks like Kind of bonkers, kind of goofy, but a lot of fun. Then with his cat burglar raccoon mask, he's just got so much going on. He's got the spiky sort of mutanty kind of feet. It's always sort of weird that, you know, his power is to turn people to stone by touching them. And he also has scaly feet. <laughs> I'm not sure when the decision was made. It was like, no, we need, we need something to zhuzh him up a little bit more. Scaly feet? Ah, go on then. It makes for a more fun action figure and definitely one worthy of this list. Now, gang, you know me. I'm a big or go home kind of guy. You, you, you know this. You know me. We go way back. So let's do another hot toy because oh, oh, I was talking about my crown jewels earlier. The, not those crown jewels. These crown jewels. Robocop. The first hot toy I ever got back when I was going through my I have a grown up job phase. That didn't last forever, but right now I've got this guy and he sure as heck does because if you want something that is such a perfect representation of a character, you can't beat this. First of all, because it's a robot. Therefore, you haven't got to worry about any kind of uncanny valley, not really quite human. Like, this is... This is it. It's just die-cast metal. It's what it has to be and it just looked like, like that's... That's Robocop. I don't know, I don't know how else to sell it, you know, but I, I will do because I could just gush about this 
forever because he's just so good. Especially, this is the version that comes with his docking station chair as well. Not only that, but he's got a replaceable uh, chest piece that's all bashed up and shot and dented. That's really cool. He's got different mouths as well, so you have the grimace type and then you've got just a, a plain neutral closed mouth expression and then you even have a kind of a ooh kind of look like he's sort of part way through talking or expressing himself so much has been done to just take the design from the movie and just shrink it down to one sixth scale yeah that's hot toys isn't it one sixth scale and then present it here it's just absolutely glorious also he has a different helmet as well which has and this is beautiful i love this it has the break in the visor the crack so you can see his eye through it as well that i remember when i first saw that in the film when that moment happens when he's fighting ed 209 and i was like i, I was <laughs> i was that meme of leonardo dicaprio standing up going whoa i, I saw that look that was great he's, he's got his auto 9 machine pistol here you can open up his thigh and place it in there. You can pull out the holster and close it. That's so great. Even the little pistons on the back of his, whoop, <laughs> they do actually come out. It's a good time for me to fix this here. The pistons do slot in so that actually, there we go. They actually move in and out. Such great little touches look like that. He's really dynamic with the posing as well. You can kind of pull his shoulders and his hips out slightly so you can get a really wide stance if you want. So much has gone into this figure. I absolutely adore him. Easy, easy crown jewel. Not those ones. We're still quite early on this list, but I'm going to go to one that is one of my absolute pride and joy action figures. Ladies and gentlemen, Axel Stone from Streets of Rage. This is my 90s childhood right here. And that's how these companies make their money, is, is making a physical representation of our childhood and selling it on back to us. And boy... Are we not mad about it, especially when they make something like this? And this isn't 100% sort of childhood because this is the modern Streets of Rage 4 version. But because of that, he looks so pretty. Because yes, if it was a 90s one, it would be all pixelated and that would have a certain charm to it. But this, the animated style, looks so great. And Storm Collectibles can recreate that animated style to absolute perfection. Perfection. That's something I've actually found with Storm is like I'm not too hot on their faces when they try and do like a realistic face It eh, doesn't really work for me. I'm looking at you Mortal Kombat 3 Sub-Zero But when you've got a more animated style like they have for Streets of Rage or Street Fighter Oh my goodness, they kill it but Axel Stone in particular, so many accessories and different things to dress this figure up with. He's got three different heads. He has three different hairstyles. You can actually choose each one of them, just a slightly different kind of blowing in the wind sort of effect. Then all these fire effects, these are stunning. He's got three in total. This is the medium, sort of more modest one. But then you can see he's got the shirt tied around his waist, the denim waistcoat there. It's just, it's all so fantastic with the sneakers and all the articulation. This is quite possibly, I'm going to dare say it, my number one favorite figure. Let's keep it on the melding of man and machine with... The Crimson Dynamo. I had to just stop myself for a second there because I was about to say Red Guardian. It was like, the Crimson Dynamo. One of the better builder figures from the last year. This guy is just big, hunky, chunky, and looks so Soviet. You know, I've never lived in Russia and I wasn't around during the Soviet kind of era. But still, I see this kind of iconography and I think, yes. Yes, this is Soviet Russia. It's the stars, but also it's the industrial kind of rivets and the smokestacks. It just, the design looks kind of bleak and cold and efficient, but also not like cutting edge Iron Man, but more kind of 
analog grinding gears sort of mechanics and that's what this is all about i love 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 the different translucent little bits that they've got in the wrist which you can kind of imagine as like cooling fluid pumping through it or something the only thing that this really misses and it's such a shame is a different head or different hands because this reminds me of like the really great baths like the sandman and the rhino but they had at least heads you could swap this is this is exactly what it is. And so if you don't like this pose, then you're pretty much out of luck because this is the only way you're posing him. And that's kind of a shame. I would love two open hands, two fisted hands. That's where Venom Pool is great. He's got the options. That works really well, but that notwithstanding, I also love the glow of the star. You could argue like, well, that's just bad painting. No, it isn't. Hasbro are very good with their clean lines normally. So actually, no, it's like the, the, the star is radiating out from his chest. All the different pistons and gears. This figure is a really, I feel, an underrated little gem. And since I started to look around my collection and go, who's not getting enough love? This guy was right at the front of the queue. Speaking of terrifying, someone just got a manicure and now we have brown costume Wolverine with big bad steel claws and I'm not sort of judging him or pushing him to the front because of the claws because that's kind of an unfair advantage. However, just brown costume Wolverine, he's kind of a very basic figure, I mean lord knows we got ourselves enough Wolverines, but this one in particular with these design choices, with the accessories, I think is probably my favorite version of Logan, especially because he's got the cowl that you can have down here revealing one of the best, if not, again, in my opinion, the best Logan face. He's got the stubble, he's got kind of a, a sneer kind of look, but it's not a crazy rah kind of thing. It's just like he's a badass dude who's about to throw down. That's so, so great. And the understatedness of the brown and tan kind of costume just really works. Whereas I love the bright blue. I love the blue and yellow. But if you want to be like super practical about it, a character like Wolverine probably wouldn't dress like, like that. Whereas like this, you could buy that. You're like, yeah, I could see Logan wearing this. I mean, that's why they had it in the Easter egg in the Logan Wolverine movie. Because it's like, yeah, brown and tan, I can buy that. Even though one day, I'm calling it now, we will see the yellow and blue Wolverine costume with the mask and the points and everything. Someone's going to put that on the big screen. Disney, or is he going to put it on the big screen? And it will look amazing. You heard it here first. You know, without even meaning to, I've got kind of a robo-centric little section here with Metalhead continuing that. The animated NECA Turtles I have such a love-hate relationship with because the very first set I bought, Bebop and Rocksteady, broke instantly the second I took them out of the package. And I was like, oh, why, why? But I persisted. I got a refund and a replacement on Bebop and Rocksteady and since then, They've treated me pretty good, especially this guy here, Metalhead. What a great little fun character straight from the childhood. And again, being Turtles, being Necker, he's got upgrades and assorted kind of things that you can add to him. Accessories, geez, that's what I was actually trying to come up with, that little word. I was kind of spitballing and just filling space until my brain went, accessories is what he has even a vacuum cleaner that you can attach to his arm but i love the drill claw here you've got the chest that opens with the laser gun that comes out and also just a little switch just the fact that the switch on his back actually works actually moves up and down that's so lovely he's got the belt with the sort of grenades on there he's just a cool looking character with the mouth that opens and closes that's what sort of sets the NECA figures aside for me I know that it's so annoying that you've got to be so careful and treat them like they're made out of cobwebs and pixie dust but as long as you have them nicely posed and sat on the shelves and they're not gonna slip over or anything then they look awesome and Metalhead in particular I think he just looks great you know, I was giving out a moment ago about Bishop being all, I'm from the future, you're all stupid. Well, here's his partner in crime, from another crappy future. The name's Cable, I'm from the future, you're all stupid, I've got stuff to do. Oy vey, if I was in the X-Men, I'd be so annoyed every time a time vortex opens and I'm like, Ugh, who am I going to have to deal with this time? They don't even bring the lottery numbers with them. Waste of time. 
but Cable at least makes for an incredible action figure. And to be honest, I think I included this guy with my top 50 Marvel Legends ever list, so it's not like he hasn't been out of the shelf and on display pretty recently, but I just wanted to have him on camera again because he looks so great, doesn't he? I mean, he really, really does. All the accessories, the shoulder pads, the bright up telekinetic eye there, the sneer on the face, the big old gun on the back, the combat boots and trousers. Ah, oh, he looks so, so cool. Absolutely adore Cable, again with the bunny ears as well there, the communicator on the side of his head, which I always makes me think of the apple seed androids from the manga. This guy is fantastic. Definitely one of the all-time greatest ever X-Men figures. Now, don't ever let it be said that I'm biased on this channel because I'm presenting to you some DC with the Devastator. This was one of the characters that made me decide, okay, you know what? I'm going to go and collect those dark metal characters because this huge, big, hefty, chunky boy really just won me over because I love my huge, big, hefty, chunky boys. At least as far as action figures on the shelves go. I actually find femininity more attractive when it comes to people, but that's just my personal preferences. Why am I going down this rabbit hole? Back to the figure. This guy with the spikes and the red eyes and the jaw that opens up. He's such a cool looking character and you can see the elements of Batman, the elements Elements of Dooms Doomsday. Yes, Doomsday. I love that kind of mashup. I wish that there was a whole line of Marvel Legends or like a Marvel story that would do that. I made a video a while ago which was Spider-Man Dark Metal. You can go find it in the archives where I kit bashed a whole bunch of dark Spider-Men. That was actually really cool. That video doesn't get much love, but it's a badass video. And I thought this was such a great concept for Batman. Now the problem a lot of people have with McFarlane in general, and I do get it, is the scaling can be way off. Like, this is the biggest Batman metal figure, but he should be a whole heck of a lot bigger. Like, he should be huge. And, you know, as a deluxe figure, that would have worked. But because he's a standalone figure, that's another thing to bear in mind. This was a standalone figure. You know, I don't see Marvel Legends, as much as I love them with all my heart, making standalone figures at a regular price of this size. Don't get me wrong, we've got our nice big deluxe figures and stuff, but they cost a few bob more. This was actually retail, so it's the same as your average regular Batman or Superman. That's value for money right there. And when you put him with all the other dark metal Batman, probably <laughs> Batman, Batman, probably because I'm not a big, big DC guy, I'm not too much of a slave to like, oh, that character should be that size, that character should be that size. I just see them all together in this dark, brooding, evil Batman shelf, and I'm like, yeah. Yeah, that looks cool. Heading back over to the Marvel Legends now, we have Arno Stark, Iron Man 2020. And the first thing that really gets me with this is just, <laughs> toss, toss, my dynamic posing. I really like what I've got going on here with the two, two angle, pew, pew kind of thing. But then I love his little blade accessories that don't seem to serve any kind of practical purpose, but give it this great kind of cog and machinery kind of look to it. He looks like a kind of a robot built in the 1920s. So something like that kind of uh, science fiction sort of genre, that metropolis kind of thing. That's what he looks like. But then you've just got the glimmer, the glint of the eyes inside the helmet as well. I just I just think it works. It's a great reuse of the 80th Iron Man body. Just tarted up like a horse draws to look a little bit more pow, a little bit more impressive. Then with the really lovely blast effects and all the nice metal and sheen going on. Arno Stark. I haven't even read any issues with Arno Stark, but I always remember him from a cover of, I think, Spider-Man Annual. So that was a good Spidey connection as well. I'm like, oh, I can justify him. He's in a Spider-Man comic. That used to be my justification for getting action figures. I, um, yeah, I don't rely on that anymore. But this guy, yeah, he's great. A bit of a random one here now. We have Monica Rambo, Spectrum, and a character who, of course, has got a lot of press recently with WandaVision, and we're getting the Elvis Modoc coming out, which, of course, means next wave. And I'm still tempted to get that, even though I don't want the Elvis Modoc, but I want the guy that she comes with because I would love to build next wave and have some more people to go with this great character because she's kind of sitting on an island on her own at the moment, and she deserves some company because she's such a beautiful head sculpt on here. The whole reason I got her was because I'm a stupid 
dorky romantic and she's kind of the closest approximation to my girlfriend so I wanted to put her next to the bearded Spider-Man and I'm like hey look it's it's kind of us because we dressed like this when we were at Comic-Con and ah memories but anyway, Spectrum, Monica Rambo looks fantastic. Love, love her jacket, and she actually balances for someone with spindly proportions and small feet. She can stand quite easily, but she looks even better in a flight stand. But yeah, this figure alone is probably why I might end up buying myself Elvis Modoc and hating myself for it. Keeping with Marvel Legends, we have the Red Skull, one of the newest additions to the shelves, and just an absolute beautiful highlight. And they say all Marvel Legends are created equal, but if you compare the Red Skull to some other ones on the shelf, you'll see that's just not true, because this guy's not normal. He is extra, extra special. Two different heads, first of all, a whole bunch of hands like he thinks he's Pizza Spider-Man. You've got a gun with a little Hydra logo and of course a beautiful cosmic cube. But really what sets this guy apart is the fantastic face sculpt. Both of the faces that he comes with are absolutely terrific. But I love the grimace, the evil looking Nazi sneer on here. I realized that with, with him and Superior Octopus and uh, Crossbow, and, and Zemo, like, I've got quite a lot of Nazis on the shelf, but as long as they're in the bad guy section, that's okay. If you ever go to someone's house, someone's house and they're like, let me show you my comic book heroes, here are Hydra, <laughs> they're in the good section. Uh, I'm starting to question you a little bit, pal. But no, this guy is absolutely terrific. So to have him on the shelf next to Zemo and being flanked by crossbones, he looks so, so cool. Definitely a strong contender for 2021, figure of the year. You one ugly mother. Keep it clean, guys. This is a family friendly channel. But the Predator, he ain't too family friendly, but my goodness, NECA did an incredible job of making him look wicked. Again, I, I, I know I keep saying again, again, I got these little verbal ticks that I need to kind of work my way around. We'll get there. But in the meantime, let's talk Predator. Because this is a version that NECA can do so well because it's not a human face. So again, you don't... Ah, <laughs> I did it. Stop paying attention to that. You don't have the uncanny valley look. It's just a perfect representation of the great design of the costume from Stan Winston Studios in six, seven, eight inch figure format. I'm trying to think what scale it is. I mean, it probably is six inch scale because he's a tall figure, but he should be a tall figure. So this is sort of seven inch scale, but then he would just be of average height. So that would make it six inch. Ah, maths. But yeah. He looks terrific with the dreads out the back as well, the soft dreads. He's got the laser firing pistol that, that'll actually move and articulate. The skull with the spine going down there. You can put the skull with the spine from the Mortal Kombat Sub-Zero in his hand too with all the blood on it. That looks really cool. But he's got, yeah, just a little modesty flap over the, uh, over the Predator butt. So it's just taken straight from the movie. And that's what you gotta love when they have the dedication to know that the people who buy these are gonna be standard nerds who will recognize anything that's wrong with it. So they cover themselves by going, all right, challenge accepted. Let's make this dude perfect. Another Marvel legend who I've done a big time job of accessorizing is Pyro. Yeah, I know this guy has got a lot going on, but you know what? I'll allow it. Oh, his little hose is popping out. Let me just fix that there. Yeah, I've thrown on the other fire effects from my Storm Collectibles Axel Stone. But I mean, look at this. It would be criminal to have these sitting in the bottom of, of a fodder box. So instead, I've improved the Hasbro Pyro, who was desperately lacking in decent fire effects. I was very sort of unimpressed with Hasbro on that one. It's like, look, you're releasing a special, slightly more expensive two-pack to give us this character whose entire gimmick is that they can create awesome things out of fire. And the awesome thing you've chosen to give him is a little poof, a little poof. Little, little flame that everyone else with flame powers has. Come on, man. You can do better than that. You can do something like this. And this makes, it makes him look so great. Plus, just the design actually is beautiful with the red, yellow, orange. That's just a color scheme, of course. That's going to look so vibrant on the shelf. Then with the great detailing, the wash in his hair, the backpack. Ah, I will never get tired of looking at this figure. Let's go over to the Spawn universe now with 
Overt Kill. Overt Kill 3, to be more specific. This is a real old school kind of figure. I went on a bit of an old school McFarlane kick a few months ago where I was like, I think I want to buy back some of my misspent youth. So I went onto eBay and some of the groups and found some classic old McFarlane figures. And this... This one blew me away. I only actually got him because I was after a different figure and he came with him in a bundle. And I was like, ah, he looks all right. I'll buy him both. And then this guy blew my socks off. He's just pretty incredible. First of all, it's a McFarlane figure from the 90s or maybe the early 2000s, which means he's pretty much a poseable statue. And he's not even that, that poseable because, yes, you can move the, the you know his hips, you can move his toes and the arms, but they kind of look out of place if they're not where they should be. And that's fine. That was the style at the time. But also, when you've got him in this kind of pose, looking all menacing like this, why would you want to pose him any other way? And because he's so big and awesome and imposing, he actually stands the test of time. I'm not getting the new spawn wave. I was Ooh, I was very tempted, but I thought, nope, nope, you've got to draw lines somewhere. So I'm not getting the new spawn wave, but for those who do, this guy will look completely at home with them. Like 20 years after being released in a whole brand new wave, he would fit in like he was just part of the original lineup. With the size, the scale, the metallic paintwork, everything about him. Look at how the paintwork kind of fades from the flesh to the metal chrome there. I think it just looks so, so nasty. Like he's been rebuilt, but also kind of like infected with technology. The way you've got sort of vein type lines here. It's just freaky. It's pure Todd McFarlane. And sometimes that can be a bit much, but sometimes he can get it just right. And in the Goldilocks and the Three Bears kind of way, Overt Kill here is just right. All right, you want to get big time now? Let's get big time. The Hot Toys Battle Damaged T-800. Oh my goodness, this guy. This was a present that I bought for myself when I finally, after about 30 years, got an actual adult job that paid me a real wage. And I was like, oh, I know what I'm going to spend that on. Hot Toys. And it's so worth it. Terminator 2 is right up there with Robocop. Like my two ultimate favorite franchises of all time. And this captures Arnie perfectly with all the most intricate battle damage. Exactly like it was at the end of Terminator 2. He's got the removable grenades. There's a little switch behind his head that's actually it's encased inside. You can take off the back of his skull Terminator style. And not only is there a switch to light up his eyes, I don't have a battery in there at the moment because I'm worried that it's going to like explode and corrosively destroy the inside of the figure. So I kind of keep it safe like that. But also it's got a little peg that you can move his eyes with. Like that's ridiculous. But yet also if the eye isn't looking in the right place, even from across the room, I can tell I'm like... He looks cross-eyed. But it's just so much detail that goes on here. And normally I'm not a big material cloth type person because I feel it looks like a dolly. You could argue this is a dolly and there's nothing wrong with that. But it's not what I want to collect. I want to collect action figures. But there's enough here that it looks like a maquette. It looks like someone was doing stop motion animation with this. And that's something I love. Growing up with Phil Tippett on Robocop and... Uh, Empire Strikes Back. I don't know why my brain wanted to say Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, no, Dave, there, there was a small little indie sci-fi film that came out before them. Yeah, Empire Strikes Back, stop motion animation. That's what these remind me of. I could imagine someone doing... Actually, I'm sure there must be stop motion animation channels that use hot toys because they do have a decent amount of articulation and you get some really amazing things. I know what I'm going to search for after this video. After the video. Don't go disappearing off anywhere, all right? Because we still got a lot more toys to cover. Let's go back to one of my favorite video game franchises. Another character from Mortal Kombat. It is Baraka. And this guy completely took me by surprise. I honestly, I, it's, it's the worst. It's like a bad thing to admit. But why did I buy him? Because I wanted to be a completionist. He was available. Someone was selling him secondhand. And I was like, I'm building up my Mortal Kombat collection. 
I need a, a Baraka. But I was never a Baraka fan. I think when I was a little kid, the look of him kind of freaked me out a little bit. And when I say little kid, I mean, Mortal Kombat 2 was like 1992, 93. So I wasn't even that little, but I was still like, I don't like the look of this sort of grinning metallic teeth black eye socket type of character but then I get this guy in hand and I'm a slightly more copus mentis grown-up adult now and I'm like that looks terrifying I freaking love it two heads both of which are awesome but this one with the mouth open and the teeth kind of unnaturally jutting outward slightly that's so fantastic and honestly I don't think Baraka in the more modern games looks half as menacing as he did when he was just a photo captured dude in a rubber mask and fake teeth because this sort of look and design so badass with the pitch black eyes that are just terrifying to conceive and then of course being Baraka the huge big blades coming out of his his arms and you can have either two long ones or two short ones again it's storm collectible so you have a bajillion different posing options two different heads like I said and then he's got the sparks that he can fire out with them he's got blood splatters he's got so much going on and then when you've got him in this kind of dynamic kind of stance I'm just knocking figures over He's just he just jumps off the shelf, but you wouldn't want him jumping off the shelf because he looks terrifying, and that's half the fun. Back to the legends now with Superior Octopus, and this is one that has again kind of got lost in the shuffle. This is what I'm talking about. It's the ones that are at the back of the shelf and getting a little bit dusty. But it was while putting Red Skull up in the display, I was like, hang on a second. Superior Octopus. Finally, I've got someone who I can really pair him up with, even though I will admit that the Superior Octopus wasn't working directly with the Red Skull. He was technically a part of Hydra during the Hydra Cap time period. I wish I had that Hydra Cap two-pack with Ar Arnim Zola. I saw it on the shelves and I was like, ah, <laughs> I'm never going to need that. Flash forward a year and it's like, oh boy, I really, really need that. Ah, well, the road not taken. But Superior Octopus is a funny figure because he kind of came out of nowhere. This was a new style body, which I think it was like an experiment before they perfected it with the retro Spider-Man. They just kind of dropped this on us and, and were like, oh, Oh, a, a, a new buck? Oh, yeah, we weren't going to mention it, but um, yeah, it's nice, isn't it? And it is. It's a lovely body. It's kind of strong and broad without being a giant type of figure. But more to the point, he's got the great torso swivel there. But I love the design of Superior Octopus with the neon green. It's the neon green that just looks super cool. And the way that they've done the Spider-Man style eyes, but more like goggles as the Dr. Octavius kind of scientist sort of look. They just have the flinging, flying tentacles everywhere. Everywhere. This guy is easily, <laughs> as I drop one of the tentacles, but still, nonetheless, he is an easy sleeper hit. Another staple from the childhood now, going back to the movies, but not too far, is the NECA Police Shootout Terminator. So I had the big old Hot Toys Terminator, but now we've got the smaller scale NECA figures, and believe me, you're going to see a couple more on here as well. But this one in particular, I think, is one of the best representations of Arnie because he's wearing the sunglasses, so you don't have to worry about the uncanny valley eye kind of thing, which I think, Necker, ugh, you still kind of can't quite perfect. The uncanniness sort of works for Terminators because they're supposed to look just a little bit synthetic. So the fact that it doesn't look like a perfect kind of human actually works really, really well. It's like, well, no, especially this one, where in the film he suffered so much damage that his skin is starting to actually kind of deteriorate and decompose. It's pretty gnarly. Like, you got to bear in mind, the first Terminator film was really a horror movie, and they had some great horror in there, especially when this dude was just tearing up the police station in search of Sarah Connor. And they've got such wonderful little touches taken straight from the movie. It wasn't just a case of, oh, well, we know what he looks like, we have some pictures, we'll recreate it. They've really gone deep, because you can see he's got his extra magazine taped to the side of the gun here, and it's all the different little, little bullet holes with the blood just kind of seeping through. It's gruesome and really pretty gnarly, but so well made and put together. Plus, he comes with a really cool battle-damaged head as well that shows all the bits of skin ripped away from when he falls off the motorbike at the end of the film as well. Occasionally, I'll, I'll swap those heads out. Normally, I'll pick a head and stick with it, but those two are both so good, I'll, I'll chop and change. But yeah, this guy with the softer goods on the jacket as well, so much value with him, and he absolutely looks the business.
And folks, that is it for numbers 1 to 20 on my top 100 favorite figures as of right now in this moment. Do my top 100 figures change and move and swap positions? And yeah, of course they do. If I made this list tomorrow, it would probably have a whole bunch of different figures on it. But these are ones that are currently I'm just looking at and going, yeah, you know what? You were worth the price of admission. You were worth what I paid for you. Let's get you on out blow the dust off and show you to the world. Granted, some of them have the dust blown off more than others. Sorry about that. But still, it's great to give them the showcase they deserve. Folks, I hope you enjoyed that. We still have 80 other figures to go. So this is going to be quite a marathon series that we're doing, but I hope you get as big a kick out of it as I do. And what are your favorite figures as of this moment? So not like the best figures of all time necessarily, but your current favorite figures that you're looking at on the shelf and going, yeah, yeah, I like what you're doing there. Let me know, comment below, and we'll share all of our best finds and our favorite purchases. So guys, until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on a single episode. And most importantly, keep displaying model behavior. Yeah. Hello there, gang, and welcome to another... Oh, ugh. it's not like I've been smoking 20 a day. Hell, oh, come on. <coughs> Take three.